Hello, how you doing? So, I wanted to do a video about medication, how it works, and the two types of medication, like the two most common meds that you'll probably use when coming across things like ankylosis, spondylitis, arthritis, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, the two drugs that I'm looking at are... Um, anti-inflammatories and biologics now these two things are very common in the arthritic world should we say and um, or the inflammatory world there you go that's probably a wider kind of area to cover and I wanted to talk about how they um, work basically you know how one works versus how the other one works so might as well get straight into it with um, anti-inflammatories now anti-inflammatories um, here in the UK we call them anti-inflammatories or uh, NSAIDs which stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs I think um, and um, uh, yeah, so NSAIDs is kind of like the shortened term. And there's there's loads of different types. Like naproxen is a really, really common one. Um, ibuprofen, which is your kind of, you know, just buy it over the counter um, type of um, drug. Um, and then there's others like uh, diclofenic. I think is one, I don't know whether I'm saying that correctly either, um, but there we go. Um, this, so these are types um, and they're different sort of brands and strengths that kind of do the same sort of job effectively. Um, so uh, what do they do? I hear you ask, good question, thank you for that. So basically, when you take them, which you can do um, like pill capsule, I think, and I think you can do the old suppository, you know, um, and uh, basically what it does is it stops a hormone. Now, I have to look at this because um, I didn't know what it was, what it was called. It's called prostaglandins. And they're like chemicals within the body, like hormone style chemicals in the body. And they um, like uh, they kind of contribute to like your inflammation, your um, pain, uh, fever, things like that, basically. So what the NSAIDs do is they go, do -do 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 -do. hang on a minute they work through your liver and so they go down to the liver and then they find these postra, prostaglandins and they go hang on a minute sunshine you're not going anywhere so they basically calm these things down um by calming them down you get reduced inflammation pain fever and the associated problems so um that's kind of how they work through the body so they directly go i'm gonna quickly they do work very very quickly um sort out the problem going straight to the problem so biologics on the other hand you may have heard of um things like Humira, Xentic, Zembrel, um Adalimumab. Crazy names. Um and they're made from some weird way of I'm sure it involves a little squirrel or something. I don't know. I heard something randomly. Don't quote me on that. It's I don't know, it might have been a mouse, it might have been a rat, I don't know. But anyway, it's biologically made rather than uh, an NSAID, which is like chemically made. 
So by logic, technically, I guess, you know, I'm not a doctor, but when somebody says biology to me versus chemistry to me, it tells me it's more kind of natural, I guess. Who knows? But that's the way I see it. Um, and basically, what a lot of these do, um, so there's one which is, works called, uh, I'm going to tell you about this one because this is the one I have myself and I know most, most about. It's called anti-TNF, which means anti, obviously, against um, TNF, which stands for tumor necrosis factor, um, which basically um, it stops this process, this tumor necrosis factor process, whatever it is, um, from happening. So what is this tumor necrosis factoring uh, all about? That's a damn good question. Basically, it finds the genes and what have you in the similar sort of way that the um, NSAIDs work, but these don't go through your liver directly. They're usually injected, um, apart from there's the odd one where you take as a tablet, methotrexate, I think, and but I'm not sure whether that's classed as a biologic, but we move on. And so you jab it into your leg or your stomach, and so it's subcutaneous rather than um, swallow it or shove it up your ass. Um, one of those ones. Um, and basically it then spreads around your body and stops the genes from basically um, there's things that are attached in your autoimmune system autoimmune immune system right and it goes -la 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 -la. i'll find the gene that's in your autoimmune system that's causing this problem and i'll suppress it so effectively what it's doing is your immune system should be up here and where things like arthritis ankylosis spondylitis work is that it um, puts in turbo mode so your autoimmune system is firing up here and it shouldn't be it should be down here so what this anti-tnf factor does is it goes hello mr autoimmune uh, immune system i'm going to push you down i'm going to suppress you down to about here to make sure that your um autoimmune disease or condition can't attack your own body so basically it goes straight for the immune system um, and the genes associated with that if they are genes i don't know i'm not i'm not a doctor um or whatever is associated with the immune system basically whatever that word is is it hormones genes whatever um and it basically says hang on a minute autoimmune system or immune system, sorry, I keep on saying auto. Hang on, auto. Done it again. That's how my brain works. Sorry. Hello, Mr. Immune System. I am not going to let you work. I'm going to tell you to stop working in this way so that it either stops your disease from progressing completely or it at least slows it down. That's the idea behind it. Now, not every um, jab or um, biologic works for everybody. You know, in the same way that not every NSA works for everybody. You know, you might be on naproxen first, move to etorococcid, which is what I did. Biologic, I was on Cosentix first, and that didn't work for me. So then I moved on to adalimumab. They all work in, in the similar uh, ways, but ever so slightly different. You know, there might be um, a different ingredient in there that could be, you know, persisting with a stomach issue, for example. Um, so 
there's a lot of stomach um, issues that you can get with um, you know side effects from both biologics and NSAIDs um, particularly NSAIDs is something you've got to really really look out for um, so one of the major side effects is stomach ulcers so you've got to be able to take um, like uh, there's another tablet um, that goes with it which basically um, covers your stomach area with whatever it is to make sure that the nasties aren't absorbed from the NSAIDs and of course ulcers basically. I forget what it's called. Uh, Omeprazole. There we go. How about that? Um, and there's another one called Lamaprazole, I think. Um, but yeah, have a look at those. Um, there's loads of them out there as well, but they ideally really need to be taken with those um, NSAs in conjunction because they cause merry hell with your um, stomach. And you don't want that, you know, just by fixing something, you cause another problem. You don't want that. So the differences between the two, there's different types of side effects as well. So I just touched on, you know, the stomach issues with NSAs. You get less stomach issues with biologics, but it still can happen. Um, and um, NSAs, things like uh, dizziness, you can get those sorts of things. This, the usual sort of stuff that you would get with any kind of over-the-counter kind of medication. So, you know, uh, stomach issues, headaches, nausea, those sorts of things. I'm not saying you're guaranteed to have them, but they might have them once in a while. Um, biologics, happily, on the current one that I'm on, Adalimumab, I don't have any side effects that aren't manageable on a daily basis. There's odd ones here and there, yeah, fatigue, headache, brain fog, which I have a certain grip on, but, you know, they're not great. They're not as good as the old me before all this sort of business happened. So the side effects you might have are, um, so when I was on Cosentix, for example, nausea was one of them, uh, stomach issues, you know, I, toilet problems were pretty nasty at that point um and i had um like recurring infections like bladder infections stuff like that um that was just me um it doesn't mean to say that anybody else is going to get those but you can um sorry the sun's just shining through what a lovely day um and um so that's about the difference between the two i've really really rambled on as normal, I'm really sorry if if you don't like my rambling. I'm really really sorry. I kind of just do it. I leave all my ums and ers in all my videos just so you can see like the effect of not being able to kind of just go blah 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 blah, 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 blah. like some people be you know it can do with their presentation skills, things like that. Um, I used to be able to be quite good at this sort of thing, but. Um, not so much anymore, but there we go. So I leave it all in for your viewing pleasure. Anyway, I will bid you farewell. I hope this has been useful. I hope it's been uh, informative, perhaps. If you've got any questions, chuck them in the comments below. I'm nearly on a thousand people. I just need like about 40 subscribers left to get a thousand. Come on, come on, subscribe. Go on. And like it as well. Go on. Go on just for fun. Nice one. I'll see you next time.